yesterday uh, about uh, afternoon we we were accommodated that's where i live 571 um, until the early hours of wednesday morning sajad jamalvatan lived in grenfell tower now his home is a hotel He's haunted by what he saw that night, and the neighbours he believes just can't have survived. I know for a fact they died because they are missing yet, and I'm sure inside the building, and being in the building for this many hours, of course you, you, are, you are not alive. Sajad showed me his videos of the fire. This was when I found my mum, and at the same time, you know, uh, I think I found my mum half past one, 15 mm. minutes and after. by then it's yeah. really on fire. This is the flood that I live in and it's completely on fire. He was leaving the cinema with his sister when his mother called from home to say their block was ablaze. He found her after an agonising wait. So I tried to go inside the building to save my mum and I saw a firefighter going at the same time with me. He, he tapped on my shoulder, he stopped me and said, there are only people who can come out, nobody is allowed in. So, and then I was like, my mom is there. And uh, I ran and I the first person I saw was my mom. And I was so happy. But happiness just lasted for 10, 20 seconds. Many people were on their phones talking live to their kids, wife, you know. And one of them were Iranian. He, he was talking to us, telling his wife what to do. We told him, get her a wet towel, tell her to get a wet towel, put on her, her uh, mouth and her daughter uh, mouth and get on the floor uh, to avoid the gas you know to avoid the explosion <sighs> did they get out do you think no Newsnight understands from a firefighter who went inside the building that they knew after 11 o'clock yesterday morning they would be unlikely to find any more survivors it was the worst they'd seen in all their years of firefighting a block of around 600 inhabitants from diverse backgrounds still smoking today. More than 50% of them were Muslims from Morocco, Turkey, Iran, from Somalia. Um, there were English people, black people, black Muslims. So what do we know of who lived in Grenfell Tower? Iranian-born Sajad lived with his family in flat 10 on the third floor, just a floor below where the fire is believed to have started. Other survivors include, on the ninth story, the Moroccan Chebuni family of four, who fled when Saleh Chebuni smelt smoke and woke up to see flames outside. And from the 11th floor, Muna Elogbani, who escaped with her husband and three children when a friend called to tell her of the fire. It's the poor souls who are missing or dead who keep Sajad awake at night. I just can't close my eyes when I, when I know people just, you know, died in front of me. Yeah. Because you saw it, did you? Yeah, I, I saw it. I saw people jumping out from the building. Uh, not one, not two, many. Uh, couldn't avoid looking at them. Yesterday, we heard of a family on the 21st floor, 20-year-old Yasin Wahabi and his parents, brother and sister. Relatives told Newsnight there were rumours on social media the family is dead. Officially, they're still missing. This from a friend today. It breaks my heart because the thing is, social media is going out there saying that he's confirmed this, he's confirmed that, and that's not the case. And those messages are going to his family and friends, and it's distorting everything. No one in that tower has been confirmed. On the 14th floor lived Syrian brothers. University student Mohammed Al Hajj Ali was overwhelmed by smoke and returned to their flat while his brother escaped. Friends have confirmed he perished after a long phone call home to a friend in Syria. For two hours he was on the phone. He was absolutely terrified, he was scared. But he had a hope the emergency services will get to him and rescue him. Two hours later, he told him, OK, it is over. The, the, fire, has had, the fire has reached me now, and I'm going to die. Goodbye, tell my mom and my father I love them. And that was the last message from him. The names and faces of the missing residents of the tower give a snapshot into a diverse and tight-knit community. 79-year-old Ligeia Moore from the Philippines, Motuku, originally from Eritrea, who was about to win an award for his work as a security guard, Italians Marco and Gloria, who moved into the 23rd floor of the tower just three months ago, and five-year-old Isaac Shawa, who was lost in the chaos of the evacuation. 
This is a community anxiously waiting for news of loved ones and friends. They were warned today the police fear they may never identify all of those who've been killed.